Hello friends and welcome to Ariel's Twilight Years, how to be a really, really, really old model. This isn't really about modelling, this is quite a personal update, but I felt like I had to because I announced two months ago that I was going through some, some mental health problems and I didn't want to leave you without the full story. And I also hope that always by talking about this kind of thing, there'll be someone who watches it for whom it is relevant and for whom it is helpful. So that is my hope. And for those of you who it will not help, I hope it will entertain you because to be honest, it's a little bit crazy. So let's get started. <laughs> oh. Around a month ago, I had an episode of a spectacularly poor mental health, including depression, anxiety and debilitating panic attacks that necessitated my cancelling actual work. I never cancel actual work because it's what I rely on generally to bolster my mental health. I'm hopefully on the mend thanks to a combination of therapy, medication and wonderful supportive family and friends. Thank you. But the entire episode has forced me into talking about and thinking about about my background in a way that honestly generally I try not to do. I know I've mentioned my childhood in a religious cult before but it generally feels like quite far distant history to me and I try to treat it like a funny story. I didn't choose it for myself, it involved a lot of activities that seem quite silly to me now and I obviously recovered enough from being brought up as a religious fundamentalist to be able to mostly do my job as a BDSM model without crippling guilt. But having experienced a breakdown of my mental health made me consider the other similar episodes I've had throughout my life. They're blessedly rare, but this isn't an isolated incident and I can't pretend that they're not related to having spent my formative years believing that the world was about to end. So I decided to make a video discussing my experience and investigating the long-term effects that my background has had on me. Don't worry, it's going to be quite a cheery video actually because not all the effects are negative. Hooray! There's nothing like waiting for the world to end to make you appreciate the fact that it hasn't and that you have actually achieved adulthood, a career and a lifestyle that is in no way endorsed by the Bible. So off we go on an adventure through my past. If you're a fellow religious cult survivor, I'd especially love to hear from you about whether you share my experiences and whether you feel positively or negatively affected in any ways that I've not mentioned. So let's do a negative one first. They're obviously more interesting. If it bleeds, it leads. The cult my family were in was the Jehovah's Witnesses. They come into the category of an apocalyptic cult which basically means they trade on the idea that the world is about to end. It's a recruitment strategy that they use to create a sense of urgency in potential recruits. As a result of this strategy, it's in their interest to hugely exaggerate the risks and dangers of modern life. They see it as evidence we're in the end times. As a result, Jehovah's Witness literature in the 1980s was full of stories about murder, torture, persecution of religious minorities, as well as sexually transmitted diseases. I got the impression that roughly 50% of the non-Jehovah's Witness population was HIV positive, that there were murderers around every corner, and that the chances of my family being kidnapped and tortured by non-Jehovah's Witnesses was about 50-50. Obviously, as an adult, I'm aware that none of these things are true, but despite my best efforts at being rational, I remain grateful for every day that goes by without a disaster. I also worry a lot about the people I love being killed. I've lost Howell in the house twice during lockdown, and both times I assumed he was dead. Um, I also retain an irrational level of fear about STDs. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> but it's not ideal. Spending my childhood looking at lurid illustrations of murder and disease was not good for me, and I doubt it had a positive effect on any of us. More positively, the sheer number of hours I spent in church as a child have had an unexpectedly positive effect on my ability to entertain myself. Boredom makes you, I think, quite mentally resourceful, and I think I might have ended up more imaginative this way than I'd been if I hadn't spent eight to ten hours a week sitting still, not really listening to non-child-friendly sermons. Since I now make a living from my imagination, I can't say that's been an entirely bad thing. Anyway, back to the negatives. This is the one that's caused me by far the most trouble, and it's all about guilt. The Jehovah's Witness version of God is a kind of unmerciful litigious 
fucking bean counter. He notices if you're late to church. He keeps a note of how many hours you spend each week doing his work. He doesn't want anything to do with you if you dare to celebrate Christmas, birthdays or Easter. And if you have a blood transfusion or eat black pudding, you're no longer welcome in his kingdom. This gave childhood me the impression that there were absolutes of good and bad behaviour all around us. Everything was one or the other, and the penalty for being on the wrong side of that divide was death. There was no middle ground between saved and damned. There was no way back for Judas Iscariot after he betrayed Jesus. If I dared to give a friend a Christmas card, there'd be no way back for me either. As a result of all this guilt encouragement, adult me isn't a whole lot better than childhood me at forgiving myself if I fall short of my own standards. Irrationally, I still feel as though it's unforgivable to disappoint myself or to accidentally hurt someone else or to put myself first. It's exhausting and it means that I tend to put a lot of pressure on myself to be as perfect as possible. Not because I'm good, but because I want to avoid the guilt that feels like it's constantly hovering, like waiting to descend on me. And if I don't manage to avoid the guilt, I feel as though I deserve to die. Because that's what we were taught. We're all born so sinful, we deserve death. And only by joining the right religion and keeping the rules religiously <laughs> will persuade God to kindly overlook our massive sinfulness for as long as we continue to follow his rules without making any mistakes. And it feels like walking a tightrope. Not a fun kind, obviously. I like some tightropes. Also tight ropes. Because however good you are anyway, you're still bad really. No amount of work will ever be enough to make up for your naturally born sinful nature. And no good deed will ever match Jesus' sacrifice. If you can't get yourself crucified to save the world, God is only keeping you alive for now because he's good, not because you are. As a result, all my nightmares are still about being bad, letting people down, causing people harm. And when things go wrong in my head, the loudest voice I can hear is repeating, you're no good, you're no good, you're no good. And I don't recommend this. <laughs> and I blame the Jehovah's Witnesses for this without a doubt. But anyway, back to the positives. We followed a whole load of rules for no reason. I'm now aware that religious sects often create restrictions for their members specifically because it keeps them separate from the rest of society and reinforces the feeling of belonging to a special, superior group. As a result, these days I'm resistant to keeping rules if I don't understand them, or if I don't agree with them. I try to be a good member of society and to behave responsibly, but if I disagree with the law, I don't necessarily feel compelled to keep it. And I'm highly unwilling to be bullied into doing anything I don't want to do. This has been quite useful when it comes to working with photographers on occasion. However, growing up acutely aware of the penalties for breaking the Jehovah's Witnesses rules has made me quite scared of being an outsider. If you broke the Jehovah's Witness rules, you could be kicked out. And if you were, no one was allowed to speak to you anymore. I knew some people it happened to and it terrified me because being a Jehovah's Witness already meant I was excluded from normal life. I couldn't go to parties I was invited to, I couldn't join in on some school activities, and everyone knew I was a Jehovah's Witness. I felt like an outsider all the time. So the idea of being made an outsider from the Jehovah's Witnesses too, and being handed a death sentence at the same time, gave me nightmares. I'm still scared of being an outsider, and however old I get, and however many friends I have, I never expect to be included in anything. So every party invitation, every time someone includes me in a social event, every time someone describes me as a friend, it feels like a kind of small miracle. So I guess it's both good and bad, and it makes me want to make sure other people don't feel like outsiders when I've got the power to include them. But I never really feel safe either. I'm not 100% sure this is positive, but my experiences gave me the confidence to violently disagree with people, I'm talking about you Jordan Peterson, who claim that we no longer live in a patriarchal society. I grew up in a religion where women weren't allowed to address the congregation or hold any official roles, where men were the head of the household, women weren't allowed careers, and women were told they had to be submissive to their husbands, and not only for sex games. Probably those kind of sex games weren't even allowed, to be honest. And if you think that the Jehovah's Witnesses are the only religion that relies heavily on sex discrimination, then I'll have to conclude that you've got something badly wrong with you. I'm talking about you, Jordan Peterson. If we weren't in a society that's still heavily influenced by our patriarchal history, there'd be at least some religious cults where the men weren't allowed to speak, do the important bits, have all the power, be the head of the household. But there aren't, are there? So f 
Jordan Peterson. And finally, and this is unequivocally positive, I'm aware of the freedom I enjoy in a way that most people don't seem to be. I thought the world would end before I turned 16. And the fact that I've been able to grow up, get qualifications, choose a job, a husband, friends, hobbies, orangutans, my own car, my own house, what kind of sex to have, and what kind of YouTube videos to make, feels genuinely miraculous. The Jehovah's Witnesses taught me that the best happy ending I could possibly hope for would be being allowed to praise God forever, for eternity. I don't want to praise anyone eternally, even myself. I've discovered many activities that feel preferable to this. Dressmaking, baking, lying in the garden, paddleboarding, blowjobs, flower arranging, caning, Stephen King, cuddling, FaceTime, blowjobs. So many things. So there we are, growing up in a religious cult doesn't make it impossible for you to have a wonderful, fulfilling post-cult life. But in my experience at least, it does tend to scatter some landmines into your future and it's hard to avoid them. And for me, it's meant that I tread carefully through my life, trying to be gentle with myself because I'm perhaps less robust than I might have been without all that early conditioning. I hope I don't let myself feel defined by my past, but it's impossible to ignore the fact that it has left some scars. But we all have scars of one sort or another, and we all need to be as kind to ourselves and to each other as we can. So as I try to put myself back together and work on not letting it happen to me again, I'll endeavour to continue to entertain you. Um, and please do comment below, especially if you're also a religious cult survivor. It's always lovely to hear from you. So stay safe, everyone, and look after your brains. They are wonderful, but they are fragile. I'm off for a lie down. And Maybe a bit of cake, maybe a cuddle, maybe some FaceTime, maybe an orangutan. Goodbye now! Goodbye! Bye-bye now! Bye-bye!